We are halfway through the year and a lot of devices are yet to be launched. In this video, we're gonna talk about our favorite upcoming phones and some of the specs and features that we expect them to have. And we'll start off this list with the upcoming iPhone 14 series. Now, a lot of leaks and rumors for the iPhone 14 devices have already come out. And of course, we're gonna see an Apple A16 chip. The problem is that uh, while TSMC started testing their three nanometer process back in December, it seems that the three nanometer process isn't ready yet. And Apple is also expected to drop the mini line from the iPhone 14. So we'll see an iPhone 14, an iPhone 14 Max, and an iPhone 14 Pro, and an iPhone 14 Pro Max. So we'll not see an iPhone 14 mini, and that is a disappointment because the mini, according to me, is one of the best sized iPhones, even though I personally use a Max. I guess that's why they're discontinuing it. What is expected is the removal of the notch for a pill-shaped cutout on the Pro models, whereas the non-Pro models will retain the notch. And while the Pro versions are expected to retain uh, things like ProMotion and ProRes video capture, we might see some more differentiation between the non-Pro and the Pro models, just to make sure that they can separate the two types of groups. Because the non-Pro Max is gonna be a high-selling device for Apple, so Apple needs to make sure that the Pro Max is gonna be worthwhile. It is possible that the iPhone 14 non-Pro models will get a revamped A15 chip, which could be based on the new second-generation five nanometer process, which they're using for the new Apple M2 chips as well. Or we could see the same A15 chip in the non-Pro models, and the new A15 chip based on the new five nanometer second generation process on the Pro models. Either way, there should be a big performance difference between both the Pro and the non-Pro models, and we'll see more information when it comes out. What is also expected is a slight change with respect to the cameras. The cameras on the Pro models are expected to be much larger as far as the sensor size is concerned. And for the first time, Apple will introduce a 48 megapixel sensor if rumors are to be believed. So the main camera will be a 48 megapixel sensor, which will obviously be a stack sensor, but it'll be a much larger sensor than the current iPhone 13 Pro models. And hence we'll see a bigger camera bump at the back, which is also gonna be a thicker camera bump because the size of the camera itself physically will be larger and thicker. There's also code found for an always on display in iOS 16, which also ties in with the new lock screen designs. We'll have to wait and see until Apple officially launches the iPhone 14 series to see if any of these leaks or rumors are actually correct. The next phone that I think a lot of people are looking forward to are the next generation, which is the fourth generation of the Samsung Galaxy Flip and the Galaxy Fold. Now, Samsung has been selling these devices for three generations now, but they've not actually garnered a lot of public attention. And while the hype does live on at the beginning of launch, it soon falls off because these phones tend to be expensive and the whole mindset around foldables is not yet completely sorted as these don't seem as durable devices. Samsung wants to change that this year so we'll see possibly upgraded chipsets we might see a newer series 8 plus gen 1 in uh, the indian as well as some other markets variant and we might see a beefed up exynos uh, which is possibly a newer version or a plus version of their existing Exynos lineup for uh, these phones. But more importantly, rumors point to the fact that Samsung may not upgrade too many things in this year's models and focus on bringing the price down of the Samsung Galaxy Fold as well as the Flip to make them more approachable by consumers, which at the end of the day is actually a good thing. And this might actually help users sort of get into the foldable strain, although I am not 100% convinced yet but let's see what Samsung has to offer. Now, of course, we have the Nothing Phone 1. This is gonna be something new, something interesting that's gonna launch really soon. Now, we've seen designs and images of the phone officially revealed, at least the back of the phone, and certain specifications are known. It is expected to have an AMOLED display with a 90 hertz of refresh rate. It is also expected to have the Snapdragon Series 7 Gen 1 chipset, which should be something interesting to see whether people like that combination in the Nothing Phone 1. And it is expected to be priced in the mid-range category. So that is also something that uh, we look forward to. As far as the design leaks are concerned, our expectations of LED lights on the back have come true. Uh, we did talk about that and in the reveal of the phone, uh, they did show a bunch of LED flashes on the back of the Nothing Phone 1. I'm not too sure if that is something that will appeal to a lot of people, but the fact that you can turn it off is always there. But we have to see how the phone fares in a long term as far as the back of the phone is concerned and what materials have been used for the construction of the phone. It does kind of look unique off the bat, but we'll have to see when we have the device in our hands of what the device actually feels like. So stay tuned for that. We'll have a review for you guys 
for sure. So you want to make sure you're subscribed to iGAN for that. Now Xiaomi's 12 Ultra is also expected to come out in uh, the coming weeks. And uh, this is the first time Xiaomi is tying up with a camera company. And hence uh, they've tied up with Leica for the lenses and uh, they made an official announcement uh, that the 12 Ultra is going to be their first official tie up with Leica for the lenses. So we'll see a Leica branding on this phone as well at the back on the camera body. So the Xiaomi 12 Ultra is expected to have a 6.7 inch uh, QHD plus AMOLED display, which is an LTPO display at 120 Hertz. The Snapdragon series 8 plus gen one as the chipset along with 256 or 512 gigabyte of storage, which is gonna be a UFS 3.1 storage, a 50 megapixel main rear camera with optical image stabilization and laser autofocus. Certain things uh, that you would will also expect is a 67 watt fast charging and India might get a faster yet charging of 120 watts. That's something that Xiaomi has been pushing in India quite a lot. So we're expecting these features and of course the Leica partnership for the 12 Ultra. So we're looking forward to that and let us know what phones are uh, your favorite in the list so far and we have a few more to go in this list as well. So we recently talked about HTC and how they should make a comeback and then there was a post from HTC on their official Facebook page in Taiwan talking about a Viverse phone. So HTC has been selling Vive headsets for a while and these are meant for VR and now HTC has launched a Metaverse which is called the Viverse and uh, some interactions have happened on those. And then HTC has announced that on the 28th of this month, they will launch the HTC Viverse smartphone. So we are looking forward to that. Not a lot of information is known for uh, this device, uh, but lots of speculation out there. We are not gonna speculate on it more. We are excited to see HTC come back and uh, show any kind of hardware and hopefully it does work well and hopefully they bring it to other markets, including India, because we are excited to test this device out. Now Asus is expected to launch the next generation of the ROG phone in India as well. While uh, the last few launches of the ROG phone were done at the time of the global launch, it seems that the ROG Phone 6 will also follow the same process. Again, we are expecting to see the Snapdragon Series 8 Plus Gen 1 chip along with lots of RAM and lots of storage and certain gaming specific features, including air triggers, some accessories that you can add on to this device, along with a 120 or more Hertz display uh, we've seen 144 Hertz display from them in the past. So we can expect that along with LTPO and Super AMOLED to be featured in the ROG Phone 6. We'll have more information on these devices, all the mentioned phones in our videos in the future. So you wanna hit subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. This has been Bharat. I'll see you guys in the next one.